we doing, folks? I wanted to share an experience with you. It's not the most pleasant topic to talk about because it deals with fish disease, but hopefully this video will help somebody. Now, in the hobby, you may have heard of some of the more common diseases out there, ick, dropsy, Popeye. Ick is a big one. You'll see that all the time on the forums. How do I get this ick out of my tank? Today, I want to talk about anchorworm, what it looks like, how to diagnose it, and what I did, which actually did successfully. I, I had an anchorworm problem. That's what I'm going to share with you, and I'm going to share with you what I did to solve it. So first, I'm going to show you what anchorworm looks like, tell you a little story, and tell you what I did to get rid of it. Here's the anchor worm I pulled out of my bristle nose. The front of it, this was lodged in the fish, the anchor, the head. It's a barbed head. The back is the tail, and in the middle of this shell, I think this whole thing is a shell, I believe is the body of the worm. Pretty nasty looking critter, isn't it, folks? So here's my story, and here's what I did. When I picked up my bristle nose pleco, I did buy her from one of the big box fish stores. I was a little bit nervous about disease. So the first couple weeks went great, it was about week three or four that I noticed that there, she almost looked like she had a sliver. She had something coming out of her back. I'd never seen it before in the tank, never on any other my, my other fish. So I was curious as to what this was. I thought, well, maybe a piece of driftwood broke off and it got stuck, got lodged in her somehow. So on looking at her closer in the tank, I noticed that this little sliver was transparent, and inside the transparent sliver was this little, looked like a little black, piece of sludge. I mean, that was what I was thinking at the time. But it kept inserting itself into the pleco, inserting and coming back out, all inside this little transparent, which I believe now is probably a shell for the anchor worm. And you've seen what the anchor worm looks like earlier in the video. So I wasn't quite sure what to do. I did some research online. I figured out it could be anchor worm. So as always, my first line of defense is hop in my car, get down to the local fish store. I do trust my guy a lot. Now his recommendation was for anchor worm to get rid of that parasite use Mardell Copper Safe, so I picked up some Mardell Copper Safe. And uh, folks, by the way, this Mardell Copper Safe, which I still have here, is still unopened. I haven't used it. And the reason that I didn't use this is I am nervous about medicating my tanks unless it's ick, unless it's something simple. So I didn't, I wanted to use it as a last route, and I, I figured there's got to be another way to get rid of this anchor worm. Now, as you've seen, this is not like your dog having worms. They're not inside. This is, a, this is an external parasite that attaches to the fish. So on, it took a lot of research. I couldn't find much on this. But finally, I found that you could actually do a little fish surgery and pull this guy out. And here's what I did. So here's a replica of the surgical table, folks. Again, I did not use the Mardell. What I ended up doing is just taking a net and keeping this slightly under the water I was able to catch catch the pleco, she's a lot smaller at the time, and hold her up a little bit. She would waddle along the net as I took my tweezers and just grabbed it and uh, pulled the anchor worm. Now the first time I pulled, I grabbed a quarter of the shell and broke that off. They call it an anchor worm for a reason, it is really anchored in there. Now in the beginning of the video you saw the head on that anchor worm, it really does get stuck in. So you'll know when you're, when you're getting it out, you'll hear a loud pop and snap and I did have the whole anchor worm so after I pulled it out I used just peroxide and put that on her wound I did it for it was about five or six days I used a long q-tip so I could stay away from her a little bit my uh, pleco but got a little peroxide dabbed it on about five or six days I did that she did not appreciate being caught but the wound healed up very very nicely so this is what I did and this is how I I did it I haven't had any kind of outbreaks since that was an isolated incident the Mardell, you can see, this is still brand new, hasn't been opened, hasn't been used, but it has an expiration of 2018 on it. So I'm going to keep it in case I need it because I do have a quarantine tank now. And you can see on the box here, let me try to focus in a little bit to show you guys. So you can see your external parasites on the bottom, those are your anchor worms. And I'm going to keep it. I might use it if I, God forbid, I have to, but if I do, I'll use it in a quarantine tank. Copper is deadly to invertebrates. If you want to keep snails, if you want to keep shrimp, the copper is going to kill them. So not good for inverts, and this is why I did not want to use it in my 20-gallon tank at the beginning and why I resorted to pulling out the anchor worm. So that's the table. That's what I used. Real simple. And that's what I used, folks. That was the surgical table for what was my first fish surgery. 
Now, I know it's an isolated incident. I know that it was something that came from the big box pet store or fish store. I had never had an outbreak of anchor worm prior to, and I have not had an outbreak of, an of outbreak of anchor worm since. So I'm just glad I was able to pull it out and that everything ended up being successful. Now, if you do have a quarantine tank and you have a major parasitic outbreak in your main tank, try the Mardell Copper Safe. Try to use it. And if you do, leave me a comment. Let me know if you tried it or used it. Let me know how it worked for you. Uh, the reason that I had a result of pulling this anchor worm out, this was two or three years ago. I just haven't put the video together yet until now. At the time, I only had my 20-gallon tank, and I didn't want to use any copper in the tank. I was afraid I couldn't get it out. And if I wanted any invertebrates, shrimp, or snails in that tank in the future, that that might pose a problem. Now I do have a quarantine tank. Now I'm three tanks going on four, about to set up a 36-gallon. So I, this is what I had to do at the time. But if you have a major outbreak, try your quarantine tank. Of course, that's what it's for. And maybe try the Mardell. Try the copper safe and see how it, how it works for you. I know people are, there are a lot of pros and cons with copper. Some people like it, some people don't. Hope that's helpful. Now you know what anchor worm looks like. Now you know what I did to pull it off of uh, my bristle nose. Three years, she's in this 20-gallon tank, still doing well. If you like what I'm doing, like, comment, subscribe. Really appreciate all the positive feedback on the videos so far. I love this hobby. My goal is to just take experiences that I go through and just share them with you guys and show you what's going on. So I hope you guys have a great weekend, and uh, we'll see you soon.